Hello, it's Philip Taylor speaking from Richmond Green Chambers in London. And today I'm looking at a book which I think is extremely helpful for people in practice. It's Insider Trading and Market Manipulation, and been written by Janet Austin. And it comes to us from Edward Elgar Publishing Limited. The book is, uh, I think, a very interesting work, very much the detailed, high quality stable of publications one gets from Edward Elgar. And Elizabeth and I have given uh, the title of our review the following, Taming the Cross-Border Crooks, or How to Curb Insider Trading on a Global Scale, because it's with us and it's something we've got to look at. That's the book itself. As I say, it's got a subtitle, Investigating and Prosecuting Across Borders. It's a hardback. There is the spine. And you can see that there's some blurb on the back. The book isn't a big one. It runs to just under 300 pages. That's the back of it with an index. Relatively short index by page numbering. Um, in fact, I think, it, yes, it is page numbering. And then if we go to the front, there's the front page. The main front page there. And there's a little dedication from the author. I'd like to thank my husband Mark and my sons Hamish and Samuel for love, support and assistance during the writing of this monograph. And I dedicate this book to them. It's actually the dedication there this time. But thank you to Janet for that. I like to mention the dedications because I know how much work goes into any of these books because I've written some myself. There's the basic blurb about the book and then there are the contents. There are eight chapters in total. Um, starting with an introduction, ending with uh, conclusions, and then there's a bibliography. There are some figures which are included. Then there's a preface, always worth reading, to get an idea of the aim of the book and where it's come from, because it has a lot. It has a relatively long um, germination period, if I can call it that. Way, put it that way. There's the abbreviations, which uh, are very useful in this area. You can see, and then we have an introduction. And you do have footnoting, uh, which is extremely useful all the way through. And you will see a certain amount of paragraph numbering as we run through the books. OK, you can see all the way through. Then right at the back, as I said, you've got uh, the index, which is there. But before the index, of course, you've got a very detailed bibliography. As I say, in under 300 pages, an interesting book and an important book for our times because Insider trading is something that's, I think, going to continue to become a major significance over the next, uh, certainly the next three or four decades uh, as we get to the middle of the century. I'm not quite sure what, where we will go in the longer term because I suspect technology is going to take over much more quickly than any of us um, realise. What do we say about this book then? Is the taming, shaming and prosecuting of insider traders operating across borders a well-nigh impossible task? That's the question. This book by Janet Austin from Elgar contains any number of comments on the difficulties and offers an equal number of valuable suggestions on what might be done. Now, just as an aside, <clears throat> it's not in the review, <clears throat> but I was always amazed when I was studying company law how many people from overseas jurisdictions just flatly refused to recognise that insider trading was actually criminal. And it amazed me because they didn't, they didn't seem to realise that it's wrong for someone to have this sort of advantage. How, and that's, I'm afraid that's rather a long time ago now, decades, but it shows you the changing face of this particular problem area that we have with both insider trading itself and the man manipulation of the markets. Now, insider trading is a term reasonably well understood by the general public today. It does strike a certain degree of terror in the stony hearts of traders in the square mile and other well-regulated jurisdictions. As there have been a few of those uh, found guilty who have suffered years of incarceration um, as a result. Um, now, insider trading together with market manipulation are basically, in the opinion of uh, Austin, the twin pillars of market abuse and especially difficult to tackle when perpetrated across borders. And this, together with money laundering as well, is another big issue for the 21st century. And the book is copiously researched, as, as to be expected for Elgar, carefully argued treatise, which is based on her 20 years as a federal prosecutor for the Commonwealth Directorate of Public Prosecutions in Sydney, Australia. And now she's a member of the Faculty of Law at the University of New Brunswick in Canada, 
and she recalls one specific case where after 12 months of repeated requests to a particular country for details of who exactly had placed certain insider trades, there was no response. The file subsequently and reluctantly was closed. Now I'm just wondering whether in the future that sort of approach procedurally will continue because I suspect it may not, but we shall wait and see. The difficulty is that this is a complex area and global concerns are also, because of the different jurisdictions, uh, obviously a big problem. Now, in a global business environment, then, in which securities markets are becoming increasingly interconnected and where multiple markets are open to investors, situations such as this can paradoxically undermine investor confidence, thereby jeopardising further the integrity of world security markets. And you can see, therefore, that's why there needs to be some sort of action. And with increased capacity for cross-border trade via globalisation, and new technologies. Transactions, as the author puts it, cannot now be easily guaranteed and therefore all the more difficult for securities regulators intent on protecting market uh, integrity across jurisdictions. And again, you can see that's a developing problem which will have to be addressed, I believe, on the global stage eventually, but it will take a lot of time. Now, a core problem here is that the market abuse offences can be dealt with only by national security because securities regulators. And as the uh, possibility of an international regulator with teeth is currently remote, to say the least, other strategies must be found. Because, as I say, the, the big problem, which I said earlier, and I'll repeat, is it's going to jeopardise the integrity of the world securities markets. And now, of course, that is something that we ought to really always have at the back of our minds. The book, therefore, focuses on the work of the International Organisation of Securities Commissions, the IOSCO, which assists securities regulators in the collection of evidence needed to aid securities uh, regulators in the prosecution of market offences. And of course, various improvements to these processes can be put in place, which the author is happy to suggest. And to this end, specific cases are cited as examples of how market abuse can be detected, investigated and ultimately prosecuted. And I think she does very well in trying to bring this out into the open. Let me conclude by saying this. For professionals confronting such problems, this book is an important find, presenting as it does cogent arguments on a difficult subject, supported by a formidable amount of research. For instance, note the 28-page bibliography and the extensive footnoting throughout, all very much hallmarks of the, and of the style of Elgar, to which we are accustomed. I'd like to thank them very much for doing so again. Practitioners, therefore, involved in financial services as well as academics, we think will find this volume indispensable. And <clears throat> the publication date is cited at the 29th of December 2017, and I'm recording this in the spring of 2018. A big thank you to all concerned. Let's just have another quick look at Janet's book. There's the front cover, um, there's the spine, and then there's the back. Just opening it in the middle, you've got, um, let's just find something that's relatively straightforward, insider trading and market manipulation laws across borders. You see how difficult it is. Suspicious transaction reports. Well, that's, that's an area that's growing. You can see the detail there of the footnoting, and you can see the paragraph numbering to find things um, fairly easily. As I said, the, the index at the back is actually by page numbering, if you're looking for anything specific. Big thank you to everybody very much for producing this work, and we will watch over the next two years whether there are any big changes that take place. I suspect there will be, because at some stage the system, if it isn't uh, checked, will clearly lead to, um, as, as abuses build up, it could lead to very serious problems in the future. But at least we have this book to give us some perspective on where we are at the moment. So thank you to all. Bye bye.